Ciao, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for clicking on this video. Today we are doing three delicious, creative, very creative recipes. So I got the question in my comments for more Buddha bowls, which I totally love because the bowl concept is a great way to build a completely well-balanced, flavorful, delicious, meal where you kind of have a grain mixture you have your fresh vegetables and you have your protein source you have a sauce to top it off and it's great because of so many of the things that go into that bowl can be prepped in advance so many of the things can be kept super simple but when you have so many simple things together it creates this fabulous meal there's not one recipe today that i make that can't go together with the other one so just because i make it a recipe for one bowl does not mean you can take that recipe and put it in you know, the version of the bowl you want. These are all just ideas and inspiration for you. Take the flavors you want, take the ideas you want and make them your own in your own kitchen. And the other thing that I really wanted to say super quickly is I totally understand cultural food, cultural ingredients, traditional food, traditional ingredients, especially with, with such a rich, deep culture as the Mediterranean, which is such a broad term because we were looking at a bunch of different countries. A lot, a lot of countries are in the Mediterranean. So I do not want to offend anyone when I reference a certain traditional cultural dish and how I took the inspiration from that. I'm, I, I think there is a need to honor those traditional cultural dishes, but I am also American. I am also just very creative. I'm gonna take those those cultural traditional dishes and change them up. I just wanna get that out of the way because I know people are very passionate about how things are done and cultures and following A, B, C, D. Uh, I have a family in Italy that reminds me all the time, Caroline, you just can't go changing the dish around. The dish is how it's made. I understand that but I'm in my own kitchen today, so I'm not gonna follow the way the dish is made. So I just wanna preference that because I never wanna step on anyone's toes or upset anybody. So anyways, so now it's time to kick off the first bowl. First bowl is inspired by paella. By, by no means is this paella, it's just completely inspired by it. Something so quick and easy and delicious, fail-proof to cook, is shrimp. Shrimp is incredible. If you are vegan, marinate some tofu, marinate some tempeh. I'm not a huge soy person, so that's why you never see me really pick those options. I have the shrimp here. It's been marinating for a while, about an hour it marinated, and then I let it sit out for about 30 minutes to get to room temperature. Temperature. I love doing shrimp because you get it freshly from uh, the fish area in your uh, grocery store and then you already have a bag ready to go to put in all of the marinade flavors and then just let it soak up in there. I added oregano, olive oil, paprika, salt and pepper to this. Oh, and garlic. You could definitely mince the garlic if you wanted to add in a lot of garlic flavor, but you're going to see there is so much garlic in this recipe video. Honestly, there's just, it's just lots of garlic. It is what it is. It is the Mediterranean cuisine for the loads of garlic. The other things going into this delicious bowl is going to be the saffron orzo. I'm not a huge rice person. Person. And I wish I was. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's the Italian in me preferring pasta, <laughs> as Jada would say, pasta to rice. I just, I love, it's just, it's, I just love pasta. But you could definitely, definitely, definitely use a long grain rice. That's usually what it makes the fluffiest kind of easy rice. And I made the rice with some saffron. Super simple, sauteed some onions until they were nice and golden. Added in that orzo, a or if you wanted to, keep it gluten free. Add in the rice and then add in the saffron the vegetable broth, bring it up to a simmer and just cook it down, cook all these flavors together. Saffron is such a beautiful, beautiful spice and flavor. Yes, it's expensive, but it's it's so worth it. It's a little bit goes such a long way. The flavors are incredible. If you wanna treat yourself to something special, it will kind of stick together a little bit more than rice, but I'm not mad about it because I like a nice hearty bite. I don't wanna, you know, just a few pieces of rice. So I have the beautiful saffron orzo, which kind of takes that riff off of paella. Saffron is what flavors that rice with some peas sometimes bell peppers you could use sausage you use a plethora of fish that's that's the riff that i'm kind of going for today in the spanish bowl and then this is a riff off of a recipe called i think cauliflower marbella it called for prunes but instead of prunes i love dates dates are my favorite so basically you're going for something fruity and chewy and then it called for olives and capers red wine vinegar olive oil and cauliflower and i think cauliflower is the perfect vegetable for this specific dish cauliflower is such a hearty vegetable so it can hold up to sitting a while in some flavors toss the cauliflower together with all this delicious flavor and let it sit overnight and then when i roasted it today 
it's kind of still has so much flavor embedded deep and in, down inside of it it's so flavorful but it's also kind of retains some of the crunchiness because it's such a hearty vegetable the olives got nice and crusty the briny papers with everything the sweet dates that also got a little char to them in the oven so you're just adding in more flavor because there's something so delicious about the beautiful cauliflower with the briny olives and the capers and then that sweet hit of a date and i love the cauliflower too because it has all these like nooks and crannies so a little bit of date will get like wedged into one of the florets or a little caper or something like that and i'm i'm totally obsessed with this recipe i can't wait to make it more because i'm i'm shocked by how delicious it turns out vegetable component of this amazing bowl so basically that's how simple a bowl is is you just need a grain a protein and a vegetable and a sauce that's the basic things you could add more toppings you could add maybe whether it's something pickled or kimchi or sauerkraut or something like fermented nuts on top something crunchy on top whether it's like croutons or bread there's so many different ways to level up your bowls in so many ways in so many ways you know just so many ways how many times am i going to say that so lastly, I made a beautiful sun-dried tomato pesto because I wanted that tomato flavor that you get in paella. And then I also added, instead of parmigiano, anchovies for that saltiness. And because I knew I was pairing this pesto with the shrimp, I also wanted to add in some extra flavor of the fish. It also uses almonds. Um, Marcona almonds grow in Spain, but I just use regular almonds. If you want to be fancy, use Marcona. Olive oil, a little hint of basil because it's, it's such a good herb. You get that nice chewiness and saltiness from the sun-dried tomatoes on top of the other saltiness from the anchovies. So I also kept this bowl dairy-free just to continue giving you guys all the options as possible. So that's why I really love this pesto. I made it nice and thick so I can use it for so many different things. You'll see on my TikTok and my Instagram different variations of how I will end up using this pesto. In this case, I'm actually gonna thin it down a little bit with some leftover broth. You could use extra olive oil, you could use water to make it more of a kind of drizzle effect. The, the vegetables have kind of not dried out but they're not like super liquidy i have the orzo that's not like full of like liquid the shrimp will be cooked so you want to add a liquid component a sauce back on top something i had failed to mention with cooking the shrimp is i as you can see saute them which is one of my favorite ways to cook the shrimp but you could also definitely put them on some skewers and throw them on the grill i think that would be so delicious especially as we get into summertime it is a perfect way to use up the grill and then also because i cooked that orzo in the broth in the wine and the saffron there was a lot of liquid left over because it cooks like pasta so there was residual liquid which is what i drained into a container to pour into the shrimp but you could also just use some regular chicken broth or vegetable broth you could use a little bit more wine um, if you're not making the orzo and the shrimp together if you're just making the shrimp recipe i recommend adding some wine or broth or some kind of liquid at the end just to keep them nice and juicy and succulent and just keep them in kind of a liquid so that they just stay super delicious and flavorful. It's time to do my favorite part of this entire thing that I get to film all the time. We're gonna take some cauliflower and a little bit of olive, the delicious saffron orzo. Take a nice little bite, make sure to get a lot of pesto on there, and then chase it with a shrimp. Mmm. Four simple recipes, but I'm shocked at how much flavor everything packs. Everything just goes so well together, and I know it's a lot of different like ideas of the pesto with the dates and the olives and the capers and the shrimp with a little bit of orzo, but I'm telling you, you have to try this. <laughs> so good. All right, let's move on to recipe number two. For the second bowl, I'm, I'm going a little bit Middle Eastern inspired. So starting off with the grains, 
aspect of the bowl. I already have them nice and prepped and ready to go. This is the quinoa tabbouleh, and it's not authentic tabbouleh in any sense because obviously A uses quinoa, which is a gluten-free grain. So this is also my gluten-free and vegan bowl. It um, doesn't have tomatoes and cucumbers in it because I wanted that to be kind of the vegetable aspect. So this is also a very, very refreshing bowl because we have the beautiful, bright, um, herby tabbouleh. cucumber red onion mixture you guys are probably sick of seeing me make this but it's just cucumbers and tomatoes i like persian cucumbers and uh little tiny cherry tomatoes for more packed full flavor a little bit of red onion mint oregano red wine vinegar and olive oil it's like five ingredients this salad can do no wrong it is my favorite i literally feel like i pair it with everything that i make on my channel but it just is a repeat i have some baked falafel here different versions like kind of the round one which is more traditional but I also made the patties so to bake the falafel you want that crispy crunchy goodness so my little hack with baked falafel is you throw it in the oven to bake it and you get a nice golden brown color on it after they're done baking is you turn off the oven and you let them sit and let the oven completely cool for like 30 40 minutes with the oven inside or with the oven inside <laughs> with the falafel inside the oven and that way they get that like hard, almost like dehydrated crispy crunch that you are used to from frying them. Go ahead and deep fry them if you want to. Um, that would be delicious too. But yeah, I just kept them in the oven and let them kind of get dehydrated almost so that they can retain kind of like a crispy exterior and get super crunchy. And then lastly, we're gonna go in with the harissa tahini sauce. So harissa is kind of a peppery paste usually. So this harissa tahini is super creamy, full of flavor because it has that chili-esque kind of flavor combo going on. That's basically what harissa is, is just kind of like a chili paste using a bunch of peppers, chilies, spices, This looks so good. So I'm so excited to try this bowl. I'm gonna get a little bit of the refreshing tabbouleh, quinoa tabbouleh, some cucumber, and then we're gonna break up the falafel. Yum. Mm. Oh my gosh, you have to try homemade falafel. It's so easy, packed with protein. I love the texture of this. And that harissa paste adds a little bit of spicy goodness. These flavors cannot be beat. Herbiness complements the garlickiness. And the harissa adds some spice and depth and flavor. The falafel were so easy to make. I really want to finish this bowl. 
but I can't because we gotta move on to the third and final bowl. For the last bowl, there's really no theme to this because I made a few mistakes, but we're just gonna keep rolling. I have the base of some greens. Sneaking greens into a bowl is a great way to get your greens in because there's so many other things going on. It's not like you're just eating a boring salad or just something super leafy. And then I'm gonna go in with the grain mixture, which is just toasted farro. I wanted to do toasted couscous, but I went to three different grocery stores and couldn't find it. And I love farro. So farro to me is probably the best grain ever. It is so nutty, so incredibly chewy. And because it's so nutty, I toasted it beforehand and that's what helped kind of bring the nutty aspect home. Absolutely love farro, so I'm loading up. And then I have these delicious pomegranate molasses carrots. I'm just gonna layer them on in because I'm just on a pomegranate molasses kick. It's something so unique in flavor, but I just love, love glazed carrots. Roasted are next level delicious. Cheese, I marinated it in some honey and lemon and orange blossom water because I love orange blossom water, but you, you don't have to use that. That's totally optional. And thyme and the cheese just absorbed so much of its flavor. So cheese is actually seen a lot of times in the Mediterranean as like a protein source. My nonna will always be like, oh, just eat a slice of mozzarella or something. It's kind of like a, a good amount of substance. I'm just gonna drizzle a little bit more of that delicious honey thyme orange blossom mixture on top if you are totally open to trying like fun exciting flavors like orange blossom is just i mean i love the smell it's probably one of my favorite smells ever but the taste is just also incredible and then i made a lebna kalamata olive dressing kalamata olives are incredible they're so good for you too and the lebna kind of made it nice and rich and tangy and added some creaminess and i just love the flavors going on all throughout this bowl random throwing it together now that i've plated it up i kind of realize how random it is but hey we all make mistakes and <laughs> it's still such a delicious concept i swear I, sometimes when you write out the recipes and then once you plate it up you realize like oh i could have done so many different things i'm going in with some delicious pistachios just to add in some more layers of flavor we got the nuttiness of the farro so i thought i'd add in the nuttiness of the pistachios sometimes the most random of things can be the most delicious. So I'm gonna go in with a bite of some honey thyme orange blossom marinated cheese, a nice piece of carrot, lots of Kalamata Lebna dressing, and a little bit of toasted farro. Mmm. <laughs> you really think like, Caroline, that's such a random bowl, cheese and carrots and farro. Mmm, 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 mmm. Sometimes I just can't explain how happy food makes me. The Kalamata dressing, so unexplainable because there's so much sweet and saltiness going on and everything's so simple, yet has such a little tiny special touch to make this meal seem 
like it wasn't meal prepped or it wasn't made in a little amount of time and i think that's like the secret to cooking such good meals was finding ways to do small little things that just elevate it so you feel like you're eating something special that concludes this recipe video i hope you enjoyed i hope you got some kind of inspiration out of this video again take everything with just like a grain of salt make it your own use different ingredients switch out things you know me i love it i love to mix it all up i love to make everything just work for you so if you are going to try anything from this recipe video if anything sounds delicious to you please let me know in the comments below i always love 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 hearing from you and if you have any ideas of other things you'd like to see me make or try out or cook for you guys i would also love that suggestion as well always looking for new ideas and different things that will make you happy and make you inspired to get into the kitchen and so i hope you enjoyed this video like i said if you did leave a comment below talk to me i'm there in the comments to talk with you um get this video a thumbs up and if you haven't already please subscribe because i have lots and lots and lots of more mediterranean diet recipe videos coming very soon thank you so much for watching this mediterranean diet bowl rendition of a recipe video and until next time i hope you create a very zestful day ciao